Good day everyone! I am Regina Suganab, Administrative Assistant 3 of Pantawid Familia Budget Unit. Today, I will be sharing with you the process of the payment of our suppliers. To further implement the operation of the program, we also need to provide different goods and services to conduct the activities of our program. With this, I will present to you the following forms or documents needed for the payment of suppliers. The first one is the Hopium Purchase Order. This form specifies the type and quantity of goods or services that the buyer needed. It also serves as a contract between the buyer and supplier. Take note that we just need one copy of this document that must be signed by the supplier. Next requirement is the Billing Statement or Statement of Account or Demand Payment. This is used to request payment from the buyer for the service rendered by the supplier. For this type of document, we just need one copy that is signed by the supplier. Another requirement is the sales invoice and the delivery receipt. This document is used to request payment from the buyer for the delivered goods of the supplier. We also need one copy of this document as an attachment. The next one is the certificate of service rendered. This is a document given by the end user to certify all the services rendered of the service provider. It must be signed by the end user. We need one copy for this document. Another one is the inspection and acceptance report. This must be signed by the inspector and the end user to ensure that all delivered items are complete based on the approved purchase order. Next is the post repair inspection report. This form is used for the inspection of repaired equipment. We also need one copy for this document. Also, a documentary requirement for the payment of supplier is the attendance sheet. This is the list of participants who attended the activity. Take note that the names, date, or dates of activity and signatures must be completely filled up. Another one is the business permit or DPA registration. This document is provided by the supplier and must be up to date. Lastly, BIR 2303 or Certificate of Registration. This is the certificate given by the Bureau of Internal Revenue to a registered business. A copy of this must be submitted by the service provider to the buyer. So again, these are the documents or requirements for the payment of the suppliers. Purchase order, billing statement or statement of account or demand payment, sales invoice or delivery receipt, Certificate of Service Rendered, Inspection and Acceptance Report, Post Repair Inspection Report, Attendance Sheet, Business Permit or DPA Registration, BIR 2303 or Certificate of Registration. Now, let us identify the three different types of suppliers. The first one is the Board and Lodging and Catering Services. Next is the Repair and Labor Services. And lastly, the supplies and goods. How do we process the payment of the suppliers? Basically, the approved purchase order will process by the Procurement Property and Asset section before it will be sent to the area or to the end user. Only then, the end user will be able to conduct the activity. After the activity is conducted, the complete documents will be sent to the regional office for payment. Upon receipt of the document, the financial analyst too will review if the attachments are complete and accurate based on the approved purchase order and the submitted quotation of the supplier. If the attachments are already complete, disbursement vouchers, BIR voucher, and tax certificate must be prepared. These vouchers will be then forwarded to regional program coordinator per signature. Once signed, these documents must be sent back to the finance unit for final review and initial of the financial analyst tree. Once reviewed, these documents will be forwarded to the regional accountant for review and certification of cash availability. Once signed and certified, these documents will be now forwarded to the regional director for approval. Finally, the cash unit will prepare the check and transmit it to social welfare development team offices to submit it to province-based suppliers. Now, we have learned the process of the payment for our suppliers. Truly, 
we must continue to create good working relationship with our service providers by effective coordination with them and efficient process of their payment. Thank you and have a great day!